Ooh, welcome back. It is week nine of the NFL season, of fantasy football season. We're going to run through the 10 most traded players in fantasy football over the last few days. As always, this list can be found on fantasycalc.com forward slash research it is absolutely free to use they pull in apis from sleeper from maybe ffpc from good leagues big leagues bad leagues fat leagues slow leagues white brown asian all the kind of leagues you can possibly find they got them in here Your mama leagues hey that's one notch too far I'm selling JMO today we'll put it that way first guy up on this list is T Higgins now they came off of their buy he's being traded in 4.1 percent of of trades right now. It's a lot. It, it's a very high number. Yep. No one wants everyone to wants or to. everyone wants to. Yeah, you know, it depends uh if you're an optimist or a pessimist. I'm a pessimist. You live in New York long enough, nothing T talk. T Higgins has a nice game after the bye. It feels like Carlos healthy. It feels like Higgins is healthy. Bye. Find him at Matt Walmart. Costco wherever. I don't think he's on sale anymore. Get though. you a T Higgins off the top shelf. Do you think T Higgins has a discount? People were just they were craving a T Higgins like Anything they can pulse. hold on to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like just the pulse. They're like, he's alive. I love him again. <laughs> and, and we don't have much, but we're going off like he had six targets. I mean, he put up. Didn't he go six for fifty nine? Yeah, I mean, he didn't have like a horrible day. Like he, we got the pulse we wanted. It's just like it just means things are kind of back to normal, mm-hmm. which means eventually he's going to hit a big game or two. I'm just most encouraged by Joe Burrow. Like, yeah, we know he's really fully T. healthy. Higgins, I want. It's just I want a piece of this offense, and he feels like the best value or the most tradable option out there. So I'm shopping. That's a super fair point. I wonder if, okay, so Burrow, we know Burrow's back because of his rushing numbers. We know he's back because they were using him under center a lot more. They're winning. Uh, yeah, they're winning, <laughs> yes. It's probably the number one indicator. They're using him in play action a lot as well, which is just an indicator of letting him move around you a see lot. That? I'm like recalling such a random play that has you just you just had to see it where he just every, the pocket collapsed and you would have thought he got sacked four times and yeah. he somehow got out of it. Like, yeah, he bike. He's he's too bike. Yeah. I wonder if okay, hear me out. Right, last week we talked about how sometimes it might be better to buy guys that aren't necessarily too expensive. Right, we use the Jacoby Myers mm-hmm. reference. We use the Zach Moss reference as like underlying pieces to buy that make your team better rather than taking drastic swings and misses on dudes like T Higgins or Jamar Chases. Any interest in a guy like Tyler Boyd? He's been like quietly okay this year. He's been quietly okay. What are you saying for like a flex option? It's like a deeper league or? I'm saying that if, you know, we talked last week about like, here's a strategy that might be able to be implemented rather than making drastic moves. You could take low risk moves that are kind of underlying moves that make your flex spot or just like, Mm -hmm. you know, Make your lineup better. And this kind of feels like one of them. I'm looking back at his stats, and his yards per reception are brutal most of the time. But he has scored in back-to-back games now. And here are his target numbers, right? This previous week, he went 3 for 40 and a touchdown. But the weeks prior, 7 targets, 7 targets, 7 targets, 9 targets. He's relatively involved in this offense. And I think as the season progresses, Joe Burrow is going to open it's up. like him and Boyd could... Higgins and Boyd could be switching though. Like, do you think that was? I don't know if the two necessarily like work off of each other. I think they're like okay. super different roles. It's more just For like sure. it's more just like can you get? Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like, Boyd is like in the slot. It's like did they maybe not have the deep ball because Burrow couldn't stand it, extend the play, but now he does, and now that's, that's where fair. Higgins. It's not like yeah, I, I get they're not feeding off each other in the same. It's almost like can you get can you get eighty percent of Josh Downs' production, but something on top of that as well. Like, do you feel, do you want to grab, I don't know if anyone would do this. I'm just kind of talking about, like, Tyler Boyd and Chuba Hubbard for Josh Downs. You know, you kind of solidify yourself through bye weeks where it's like, Chuba's usable. He's getting 15 yeah. to 18 touches. He's not being great. But, like, these are the kind of trades I think that can shore up maybe your flex spots or something you want to think of. Chuba's a really good example. Like, I, I feel like he's got some juice with Miles doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And people don't really like him. People don't like Tyler Boyd, but people yeah. love Josh Downs right now. I, I get what you're saying. It's like you don't want to pay a top two price of Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, maybe go down a tier to T Higgins, Joe Mixon. Do we really want to find extra value and go to a third tier? So yeah, it, so it, just so you can be invested in the Bengals, I like the idea, but I guess it depends on the league you're in. So it's almost like a lot of these videos and a lot of content around trade targets. It's almost like we have to choose whether we want to buy or sell. I don't know if I necessarily want to buy these players given where I think their value is going to go as much as like, this is me saying he's going to be better over the next eight weeks than he has been the previous eight weeks. But yeah. most people who have him also kind of know that as yeah, well. Not- so it's not necessarily like, of course, I think T Higgins is going to be good going forward, but 
do I want to pay the premium price? Well, that's that's a Matt wide receiver twenty three. Do you think? Like, if we started from a zero zero spot moving forward, I feel like that's kind of where he'll be. That's probably wide two. Maybe, maybe where maybe he'll the be. Teens. Where would you take? Like, uh, I'm thinking about back to summer where like T Higgins was what the tie, tie, uh, wide receiver like 13 to 15 yeah if that too high yeah like what about like um Amari Cooper now Amari Cooper's produced a little bit more but like I think everyone's way more hesitant about his situation I think I would go with Higgins just based on situation like not even player analysis just straight up what position and situation they're in yeah that's what that that, that I think is like something where it's starting point because Amari Cooper I'm not sure where he's ranked in this but I feel like he's probably higher than wide receiver 23 they're, they're both big enough names to definitely have the conversation mm-hmm. all right Let's move to Calvin Ridley, second player on this list. Sell. It was a sell for me I think we last just, week. I think we just like threw out an example. Like you mentioned Amari Cooper, Higgins the rest of the way. I think I might go Higgins over Ridley the rest of the way. And the market has Ridley valued over him. So like that's a trade you could very feasibly make throughout Ridley for Higgins. I, I think so too. And I know you like to avoid the one for ones, but that's something I would do. It was like, yeah, he's going to have a big game this weekend. And it wasn't even necessarily that big, but it was also so predictable. I felt like it was an easy matchup. It just feels like these two like might both have very inconsistent high games, but I think you might have a safer floor in T at this point. Moving I, forward, obviously the eight weeks we've had, he's had like four games below five points, but like... Yeah, I think the way the Bengals are trending, you also have a top, um, you have the bye week coming up for Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. I think Zay Jones should be back after that. They're Ooh, also pushing their their game through ETN at this point. He's getting yeah. 20, 25 plus touches. Their defense has been great, so they don't need to score a ton of points. I don't know, Ridley, cool player at this point, but he's nowhere near the actual production of of like where he's. And this valued. is even coming off of an okay game. Yeah, like. All right, Tony P, valued at RB10. He's an easy sell. Yeah, like he came into the season with hopes to crack that top five, and now like you could maybe convince yourself like, oh, he's came back to where he does, belongs in the RB10. I think that's way too high. Like he's top 10 in nothing right yeah, now. Top is, 15. He is literally RB10 for nothing. Yeah, especially I, if you're not in a PPR league. Like, he is useless. Right he doesn't now. even really catch passes either. He had the one versus LA uh, two weeks ago. It was pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, he's not doing anything. No. He's not scoring goals. Uh, goal line touchdown. He hasn't scored in six games and four games. He hasn't gone over sixty rushing yards. Like. I don't know. Like I'm not sure what to make of this. Maybe he was never fit for this role. But like that, that feels like a stupid argument based on like last year. He I would have games where he had fifteen touches. What was his injury? It was serious. That's where I was going with this. It was yeah. like maybe the injury has. When you get older, dude, like serious injuries eventually they start to build up scar tissue and maybe He's you like, lose explosiveness. How old is he? 27? 26, I think. 26? 26. 26 I think a lot of people see him as like 24, and I'm like, that's a big gap in running back years. There was no like, ligament damage. I think it was a fractured, um, I think it was something, something in foot, fractured in his, right? I think it was in his leg. I'm, I don't know. I don't, yeah, we're both fucking just yapping at this yeah, point. I, I don't think it was ligament related, which made me feel confident that like when the bone heals, usually you're good to go and it's yeah. not. It's kind of it, thrown under the rug. It'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. And most of like the doctors that you listen to kind of the off season said the same thing. They kind of echoed, you know, that he should be fine and ready to go for the start of the season. And now it's just complete free fall. The only thing I'd be able to hold on to at this point is like Dallas looks really good again. Their mm-hmm. offense looks good, but the scoring opportunities are not for the running backs. And if I'm being honest, this week they play Philly. Like any value he does have is probably going to go even lower versus the number one rushing defense this week. Like, yeah, I mean, might I'm, go from RB10 to RB12 that quick. Yeah, I have a hard time believing anyone that has the RB11, whoever that might be, would actually sell you them for Tony Pollard RB. We redrafted fantasy again. I think Pollard would probably go in the RB15 like to 20 range. Yeah, for that. And I think that's even like wishful thinking. All right, Justin Jefferson, fourth most traded player. He's on this list each week since he's been injured for the most part. Nice. Yeah, he's he's been a sell for me. We do have kind of breaking news. We're we're filming this at 4:22 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon, which means the trade deadline officially wrapped 22 minutes ago. Maybe something kind of sprinkles in as we're recording this, but we do know Joshua Dobbs will be the Vikings quarterback for the remainder of the season after this week. I think they're going to start Jaron Hall in week nine, and then it's Joshua Dobbs. And Joshua Dobbs has been more than serviceable. I'm not going to you know out of my way and, and go nuts here because then again he's he's leading a team that's like what one and seven right now. Yeah, yeah. like what you mentioned earlier about Higgins, like we need a pulse to hang on to. That that's probably what Jay Jet is. That's their pulse right now. Like we this got would Josh be my Dobbs. cell window. Yeah, and I almost said we should throw in Jordan Addison at some point in this video because I feel like he's probably one of the more panicked players right I now. I mean, why, why don't we just talk about the offense yeah. all right now? Josh Dobbs to me is like it gives me a little bit. It, I definitely feel better. Yeah. 
but I don't know how much of it is like it's still false hope. Like if, if you're if if you're able to sell them anywhere near what their like pre yeah Kirk Cousins injury was, then I would do that a hundred percent because Dobbs is not Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is on pace for is he number one in the NFL in passing yards? I think he's two two a. Yeah, okay, so he's number two in the NFL. He's having his probably his best year um, up to this point, and now Josh Dobbs is not going to deliver. I will say, he, like, he's been providing for Hollywood a little like, recently. Targets. And Addison, I, I don't know. It's a fine line of, like, is he enough to, like, still feel invested into? Is Dobbs enough to still feel invested into the wide receivers? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to sell. If I can't sell, it's not the end of the world. If the Vikings were coming out and saying Jaron Hall is our starter for the remainder of the year, I'd be like, fuck. You know, yeah. I would have like a pit in my stomach. Get whatever you can. If I have if I have to sit on these guys and play them, I'm okay with it. Knowing that Dobbs is like a serviceable backup QB. Addison, I think, will be a high end wide receiver three. Jefferson, when he comes back, is gonna be a wide receiver one, no doubt. But I'm for not sure. I'm not expecting overall wide receiver one number like he clearly falls beneath mm -hmm. Tyree Kill and those guys he, hope he might be like a Devontae you start him every week but it's like you just don't know what you're getting right because of the QB play so exactly. yeah Hawkinson stays there as a tight end one for me what but about again, all of them Madison kind of, I mean acres I feel like are kind of like splitting carries I now they, I, I think you just gotta get anything you can yeah they're toasted Madison I would flip for Zach Moss real legit I don't yeah. know if anyone would but like I would 100% make that move because um, they can't get a run game going in general now it's I mean, yeah. you could argue like Dobbs could open it up. Let's what? Just because he's a runner a little bit. I guess I don't know. I don't I think that's Kevin O'Connell's game plan though. No, definitely not. I just think the backs that they have just lack any sort of talent right now. No yeah. explosion, anything like that. So, all right, number five, James Cook. This handwriting's horrible. Sorry. Mm. Ooh, I got hold by. This is the first week I think that I went sell with him, and you went yeah. more heavily towards buy. Just sick of his shit, honestly. <laughs> I, I it's, it's like 14 for 60 every week, bro. I, I'm almost buying because I feel like there might be a little bit of fear around Lenny. It's not even for and me. I think it's you not might be able to Lenny. capitalize on that. Yeah, be. For, for you, I know it's not because you don't care about Lenny. But I think for a lot of people, it's like you just see the signing and automatically like concern. And scoop him as a discount. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Lenny just fits into Damian Harris's role where it was annoying for Cook anyways. Maybe he takes a goal line carrier or two over the next few games. Maybe catch a couple passes. But like that's what Latavius Murray was doing. This feels like yeah. more of an indictment on Murray than anything else. Are you, this is like contradicting myself, like Lenny could catch the ball pretty well in Tampa. Does that concern you, him being a receiving threat for Buffalo or more um, of a threat to Cooks? Not really a threat to, here's the thing, like Cook wasn't really catching that many passes anyways. It feels like Latavius Murray had more screen set up for him than yeah. Cook did. And Latavius is a pretty good pass catcher. So again, like I think there's a way that Lenny overtakes Latavius and then becomes like a stronger version of a 1B in the offense. But it almost feels like James Cook's role is super defined. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't actually matter what happens behind him. They just, like, True. take I don't him. see it getting much better or worse. Right. It's it's kind of like you could just expect 13 to 14 carries, and, like, hopefully he has four targets, but usually he'll have closer to two. Yeah. So he's just been, like, a really uninspiring low-end RB2, high-end RB3. If if people want to, like, yell about, like, touchdowns or whatever, like, might be a person this offseason where everyone's like, oh, yeah, 270 touches, but only scored three times. Like, obviously, your regression is, like, clearly he's not using that yeah. part of the field, so. I kind of like him just to buy as, like, a guy. You don't have to really worry about him winning your week, but he's not going to lose it either. That's kind of my mindset with him. Yeah. I just don't know if he's priced. I, I legitimately, again, like, keep going back to Zach Moss, but I, I think about a guy who's going to give you 9 to 13 points a week that you kind of know it's going to happen. And Cook feels like he's going to be priced higher than Zach Moss or higher than guys in that tier. I, don't, I feel like a lot of people don't really. Really? Maybe I'm like biased towards him now because I've liked him all year. I don't I, I don't think there's a huge name value there that yeah. you got to pay for. I'm just making shit up now. All right. Let's just be yapping. Uh, Chris Olave, number six. <sighs> this is fucking hard. He's so painful. He's in that wide receiver 18. Does that say 18? 18, yeah. Tired of his shit. I don't have a lot of it anywhere, so it's irrelevant to me. But what the fuck has he done? Nothing. And even Derek and Carr is like, like ripping right now. I'm just going to have the same argument as always. He's due. Volume. He's getting it. Is he? Re recently? The targets are still there. Really? He had nine last week, and he had 15 on Thursday Night Football versus the Jags. It's just he's done nothing with it. Are they anywhere downfield, though? I feel like he's actually, I think Caruso had a deep target stat. Salave. Yeah, I mean, the targets are definitely still there, but like last five games, here are his yards per reception numbers. 9.2, 8.1, 13.7, 6, and 4. Anytime you're like sub 10, that's like, 
just slot catch the ball fall down type of numbers 2022 his yards per reception mark was at 14 and a half this year it's down at 11.8 he's got one touchdown so yeah the volume it does actually look like he's going to crush his target numbers from last year he's just not like Rashid Shahid's a real playmaker down the field yeah. Kamara is getting fucking 10 targets a game it's it, it's hurt Bobby. He's not getting valuable touches. He doesn't really get targeted in the red zone. He needs either. Michael Thomas to go down with injury. Like, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Michael Thomas is, like, good enough to be annoying, you know? Yeah. And it's not like Alave is, like, a... Uh, Did you see that one play just hit him in the face? Yeah, he's... He, I mean, he's been a little bit sloppy, too, yeah. which is not, like, characteristic of him, but... I <sighs> Like, last year... It's not like he had crazy numbers. Like, I think right at 1,000, four touchdowns. Like, Well, that's why it's like you look at him, he was so good as a rookie that you're mm -hmm. like, he's got to take that next step up. But no MT... Rashid Shahid really didn't come onto the scene. Like, maybe maybe we didn't realize. And I also think without Derek Carr, like, Carr's a dump-off fucking machine at this point. Yeah. And he was like that kind of, like, he set records for Josh Jacobs in Las Vegas last year, too. That's true, but he just supported Devontae in, like, 180 targets or whatever it was. Like Maybe Chris Olave ain't Devontae. Maybe he so. ain't. Maybe the same thing. So, Chris Olave, um, yeah, I just, I just know where it's going to start coming from. Maybe, like, he starts going, oh, touchdown here, touchdown there, long pass here, long pass there, but they're not going his way right now, so. I feel like I just couldn't get rid of him. Yeah. I don't I think I'd get anything in, in return that's worth it. That's why I would just stick it through. Joe McSteen. Volume. I mean, RB18 is, he's like a hold for sure. They're not, like, 19 yeah. better running backs in fantasy at this point, but. Joe Mixon or Tony Pollard. I legitimately feel like Pollard's think, like useless. I think that's a straight. Like, when you say you hate one one for one laterals, like that's a perfect. Yeah, Mick, Mixon's a sell. Anytime Mixon has a big game, he's a sell for me. And I actually felt like Mixon's game style. I listened to a lot of pods like leading up to this week, and a lot of them were talking about how San Francisco's defense um, matched up with what Mixon does well, or what the Cincinnati Bengals can do well against them. Anytime he has a big game, like, that's a sell for me, because he's almost always sitting in at like 50 rushing yards. He has two touchdowns on the year, and I get it, like Bengals offense will be a little bit better, but I just don't think Mixon's going to be any reason why that's the case. You don't think you can finish the year with like seven, eight touchdowns? That's like scoring six touchdowns over the second half of the year. I guess like I could see it, but that, yeah, RB18 is where he is. It's more like I'm holding. I'm okay holding. Anytime he has a big game, if you can get above what he's listed as, I'm shipping it. Would you rather him over Cook? Yeah. I, Cook, I, I Cook still... and like Pollard are almost like, it's like Cook, I almost feel better with a floor than Pollard, but like obviously Pollard has a weekly ceiling, yeah. at least from last year that he showed us. I, I still like Mix, and I, uh, this week I think they play the Bills who actually don't have a great run defense mm -hmm. to the running backs. I, I, I'm just going to say be a fun fucking game. Dude, there's so many good games this week. Yeah. Dallas, Philly, there's a shit ton of good ones. Devontae Adams, number eight on this list. He is valued as the wide receiver nine. And like wide receiver 10 last week? He was, and he's been on this list for a while, and I think hit him with that sell sign. Good luck selling him now. Yeah. Went off 11 yards. Yeah, he was like, um, I think I made my video about him a couple weeks ago, and I was... That's probably your best take. It's for the only so good far. take we've yeah. ever had. Um yeah, like, I mean, we've kind of been thinking about the. Like, we've been talking about this since the preseason. It was like, Devontae Adams is awesome. He'll have big games. But this is what happens. This is the first time we've actually seen the Raiders offense just be terrible. Like, like not even Jacoby ate. Yeah. And, and they've had bad games. Like, they got their shit beat by they were Buffalo. Just, they were dominated last night. Yeah. Time of possession. Like, could do... They could do nothing right in that Even game. the pick six that, like, kept them in the game, like, still could do nothing. Yeah. Outside of that, I mean, it was... Yeah. It was just blank across the board. And this was even, there. like, I feel like a better game for Jacobs to, like, get the run game going, and they still just couldn't do shit. Yeah, it's gross out there with Jimmy G. Um, all he does is throw fucking picks at this point. Targets is the guys in the in the right proportions. They're just not good targets. They're not valuable targets. And no. Adams is pissed as fuck. He's extremely frustrated. I don't know how this year is going to um, end up. But Adams is – I don't really understand what his trade market is is going to be. Do you think people are trying to buy him at all right now? I think wide receiver nine's like, got to be false. Like, he's not a wide receiver one anymore in my mind. Would you take Pollard and and a combination of, uh, let's say Pollard and Ridley or Devontae? What side do you take there? I think I would go Pollard and Ridley. And you like Ridley? And I don't like Ridley that much. Like, I had him as a sell, but it's like, are Ridley and Adams that different at this point? I'd still take Adams by a wide margin, I think. Over both of those? No, no, no. Uh, over Ridley, for sure. Oh, yeah. But I don't think it's like, like, I think Adams at this point is like a high-end wide receiver two. Ridley's just a low-end wide receiver two. I think they're within the same. I don't even know if Ridley's there, to be honest. His value says he is, but I, I almost feel like if we looked at his stat, what is he right now, stat-wise? He's got to be like wide receiver fucking 30, 35, it's right? Probably worse than that. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's where he should actually be valued. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's actually like a close trade. I think ultimately I'd probably take the package side there, but I think it's worth kind of discussing. Mr. Aaron 
Jones, the third string uh, Packer running back. He's a buy for me. I'm, at this point, I'm kind of looking at him as like a... I feel like you could get him for so cheap. I mean, if he does keep this shit up, it didn't cost you much. I'm looking at him as like, all right, it's week nine right now. I'm almost like he's going to be awesome for me in the playoffs. Like That's the investment I'm trying to make right now. I am curious. So it's like, I often think, if he didn't have such a good game week one, yeah. how much of that am I still holding on to? Like, even if he just had 15. That's su super fair. Compared to the RB1, I'd yeah. be like, Aaron Jones is chalked. Yeah, no, that, that's a super fair point you're making, but like, I ain't going to give it up. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't never giving it up. He was my fantasy RB that I picked in the slot. In the slot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was a fucking sharp-ass pick, and now I, I fell one. in love, and I also drafted him in this league, and I was like, yeah, I'm all in on it. I think it's kind of warranted, though. Like, it looks good again, and now they're just he's so clearly less than 100%, man. I talked about this a lot in my videos this week. It was like he was off the injury report, but Matt LaFleur came out and was like, just because he's off the injury report does not mean he's 100%, and we're going to play him that way. And this, know, At this, this point, they should have thrown him on the IR. I was going to say, this is like a hamstring injury that he's been dealing with for fucking eight weeks. Yeah. Grow up, you know what <laughs> I mean? Don't do what you did in week one and then keep pulling this shit. <laughs> He was, like, actually the one that had the better news. Like, Deontay Johnson got thrown on the IR right away. Jones would be like, two weeks, he'll be back. And it's yeah, been so, worse. So it's almost like I'm trying to buy him at his shitty price, knowing that it's going to take him, like, three more weeks to get back the role yeah. that he had early on. He's, he's not really startable unless you want to throw him in the flex at this point. I, like, have to start him in one of my leagues, so I'm going to keep doing it, but it's really <laughs> unfortunate. And he, he's an investment over the long... Let, let me ask you, um, would you rather have Aaron Jones or Kyron Williams? Let's say Stafford's back in, like, two weeks. He's let's, okay. Let's say when Kyron gets back from IR in like two, three weeks, Stafford is also okay. Uh, this is such like a, take my personal opinions out of this, how much I like Jones. Uh, Kyron's just shown a lot more to bank off of. And especially with the Rams just not throwing touchdowns this year and feeding him so much of the goal line. I think I got to go with him. I think I would too. I think I would given if I'm in a situation where my team is good. Obviously, if you need points now, yeah. I'm not sure Aaron Jones gives you that. But like <laughs> if you're if you're three and four, if you have a bad record, two and five or whatever, like obviously trading for Kyron does nothing mm -hmm. for you. So keep that in mind but we have B. John robinson number 10 on the list he is valued as the rb8 right now so he's dropped a little bit thank goodness being trading 3.4 percent of trades he's coming off a decent week uh 60 something rushing yards but also five targets and a score finally got a tutty there we go i think last week we we both agreed rb4 is overvalued but we still could only name like seven guys <laughs> tops to take over him and now this is right where he should be valued that's a big dip down from rb4 to rb9 yeah. like you don't see the elite guys really fall off that quickly no but it's like it was this is where what needed to happen whether or not it's a big jump it, it was needed i think the falcons are going to be good going forward what's their schedule like any idea i mean we play the vikings this week oh, jaron hall yeah. so that's kind of we we just overall for, even from the beginning of the season always had the easiest schedule in the nfl mm -hmm. um our schedule is good i also again i've been on record many times i am fine with the way arthur smith is using Bijan robinson getting 13 14 15 carries plus he didn't have a big game in the passing game but he had five targets mm -hmm. and he's consistently getting at least five targets almost every single week and he's just going to back his way into almost 90 targets on the I year. I think if Bijan had like even three rushing touchdowns on the year right now, we'd be like, this is exactly what we wanted. Mm -hmm. But just since he's been so dry in the red zone, in the goal line, and Arthur Smith is having Johnny Smith throw the football yeah. close to the goal line, Problem that's, is he, that's why we have so much he doesn't. He gets red zone work, but he doesn't get goal line work. So he needs to score from 18, 15, 12, 11 yards out to get the touchdowns, which he's obviously capable of, and those are how his touchdowns <laughs> yeah. happen. But he doesn't necessarily get the goal line work. I also um, haven't seen like a B. John breaks for you for a 75 yard touchdown this year. Yeah. Like, I haven't seen any gigantic plays. He did it like in college, but he's not, it's not really like. It's easier said than done. That's like for sure. something hard to factor in, but I'm cautiously optimistic about our offense. I think like we also like f have fumbled the ball inside the five like fucking nine times. Mm -hmm. It's all Desmond Ritter does. I it's a lot ridiculous. of me feels like we're going back to Ritter again after Heineke last week. Uh, Heineke kind of gave me hope though. If we yeah. don't give up nine deep balls <laughs> to fucking Will Van Levis, Jefferson. we win that. And to it's all it's all bad out there. But I'm, I'm hopeful over the second half of the year that we can get our shit together. I feel like we've had just a lot of unlucky breaks, a lot of wins that we could have had had we not done a bunch of dumb shit. That'll um, sift into more points for Bijan, but I still think Algier is going to be involved. I think Cordell is going to be involved. And again, I, I don't have a problem with it, but Bijan's going to have to pick and choose the spots a little bit. Do you think the Falcons and Arthur Smith will fully unleash Bijan in the playoffs? If we get there, yes. What about 
fantasy playoffs like in a season yeah it wouldn't surprise me i think this has kind of been his um his mo the entire time it's like let's not just give the rookie 30 touches a game for the Mm -hmm. first eight weeks of the season and ruin him because you see so many rookies hit a wall that happens all the time where they're just not it's not always a matter of them getting hurt but a lot of a lot of times they just get completely ineffective and are almost useless because i mean the game in in the nfl not only are you extended an extra five games maybe six depending on the playoffs could be all the way up to like seven or eight extra games in a year but the dudes that are hitting you are, are bigger and faster and stronger. Yeah. And like, there's just a lot more stress on, um, on who you are as a rookie. So that's another thing that I'm like, been I've been conscious of and saying like, oh, they're using him in the right way. They're using him as an athlete, not just yeah. a purebred fucking thoroughbred running back where w- when it gets down to the line, I think at the end, Everything I think matters. Yeah. I think Bijan will start to get 20, 25, like 27 yeah. touches a game. And that kind of goes back to like, that's why you draft him eighth overall. You want to be able to use him when it matters most. Yep. So yeah, he's been on record talking about that. How yeah. he's like, I don't want to like use the shit out of him early on in the year mm-hmm. that that big super bowl runs coming speaking of aaron jones what are you doing with christian watson i mean you're just holding that fucking l at this point who the fuck is buying him it, he's the opposite of jones he didn't have that great week one and like he hasn't done anything he can't do and the problem is jordan love has been so out of control bad too yeah i actually kind of like him in fantasy i was gonna say i don't think he's as bad as people have made him out to be I think he's kind of a buy low for me if we're talking quarterbacks. I actually started him in a league in the Eckler League last Dude, he's week. Like Put up like 16 points for me. It was fine. 12th in points per game. Yeah. Like he's getting a little too much hate when it comes to fantasy performance. Like he's got also a little sneaky rushing upside. Mm-hmm. Top 10 in rushing yards. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing with Watson. I kind of feel like this was always maybe a possible outcome you know, with him. It was great to see what he did his rookie year, but he was polarizing. He was a guy that was like, okay, he's... He was so good, unlimited targets, scored so many touchdowns in so few games. It's not real, but is he still a great player? Can he still be great? It's like, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it kind of felt like there was always something about his game that felt like it could have been fluky. He was score-reliant now. They're not scoring. Yeah, and they don't they don't play like a possession style of like passing game. It feels yeah. like a lot of them are just like chuck it deep and hope something happens, and he's kind of the perfect player for that style, but it's just not... It's just not rolling his way. Mm-hmm. There, there's just a lot of things going into it. Like love just missing a throw here and there. You want to talk about Moss or no? To be honest. Uh, buy Zach Moss. Hold Zach Moss. Thank you. Sell him. Fucking sell him. Go get Aaron Jones. Sell him to Jupiter. Buy George Kittle. Sell George Kittle. George. George had a big game. Would you keep him? The only league I have him in is the Dynasty League. And I just nothing, feel like the tight ends are so shit. If you got a top five name, just keep him. Would you rather Kittle or Engram? Kittle, but... I think there's something practical behind saying like Kittle for Taysom Hill and Zach Moss. I didn't want to say it. No, I, w- I wouldn't go that far down, I don't think. But I think those are reasonable types of moves to start making. Or if you want to like really try to get cute here and, and you know, George Kittle for Trey McBride plus, you know, whoever that may be, Zay Flowers or some shit like that. What do you think about Zay? Every week he's just so highly touted. And- yeah, it feels like a bunch of nonsense. It, it feels like the end of the year. Maybe he made a couple big plays, but all of his targets are almost useless. Oh, it's like you yeah. could throw all the target numbers out there and be like, his target share is so high. It's like, yeah, if they're fucking four-yard targets behind the line of like, scrimmage. When I do the rankings every week, I just drag his ass because they have him as like a top 16 play every week. And I'm like, he's never had 15 points. Like, what are we doing? He's never had 15? And half PPR, no. Jeez. I feel like I'm a bullish person on Zay Flowers. I That's love him as a player. It's weird. Okay, so he's had target games of he's 10, volume. 10, 11, 8, 6, 7. He's also had games where he's averaged 15.5, 18.7, 14.6, 18.8 yards per reception. But it's never a combination. Zay a Flowers big is better than Chris Olave? Fucking might be. Both volume kings. Yeah, he's yet to surpass 78 receiving yards. Got one score. One touchdown. Part of us should have known this, like being invested in a Ravens wide receiver. Like, there's a ceiling. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone did kind of know that, but also at the same time, it's really like he had. He was so fun to watch week one. That's the thing. He, he didn't even like score that many points. He was just awesome to watch. Right. Zay and Flowers. We got same thing with it. Aaron Jones. Same thing with like Jameer Gibbs, who finally had his breakout because the whole lane kind of cleared off. But like in PPR, Gibbs has actually been good. He's been, he's actually been kind of great. Zay Flowers in full PPR, absolute hold. This guy's going to put up like nice wide receiver three, sometimes wide receiver two numbers for you pretty much every single week. But if you're playing in a half PPR league, his name travels further than his points. Sure. All right, he goes away. Thank you for watching. Peace.